All right, so 500, uh, 500 cap, one three, no limit. Boston Billiards. Was that Nashua? Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. So, uh, yeah, myself and the villain are about 650, 700, somewhere right around there. Okay. The other guy has a little bit less, but we're all pretty close. Okay. It's six handed. Yep. Uh, I'm under the gun with Ace of Clubs, Queen of Clubs, and I opened to 15. Okay. Standard open size there? 15, about? Yeah, usually 12, 15. Yeah. Um, small blind and big blind both call. Is it a six max table or is there just six people that are, happen to be at the table? Uh, that's, that's all they allow is six people. Six max. They don't have plexiglass though, right? Nope, just masks. All right, so 45-ish to the flop, right? Yep. Okay. And the flop is it's the ace of, I'm sorry, the queen of spades. Uh-huh. Nine of spades. Uh-huh. And the queen of diamonds. So you have ace queen of clubs. And it comes out queen of spades, nine of spades, queen of diamonds. Pretty good flop for you, right? I was, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes check, check. Uh-huh. And uh, I bet 20. Okay. So you bet And the small 20. blind. Small blind calls and the big blind raises to 80. Okay. So you guys are about 650 deep. You basically have a nut hand here. In the sense that, you know, obviously, like, you know, you could lose, right, to, like, queen nine or, or pocket nines. But this is a very sort of nutish type of hand because you beat basically any other queen here. So one of the things that I would sort of look at here, it's kind of interesting that the small blind makes this call, which I would tend to mean that the big bl what what I would infer from that would be that the big blind is going to have, like, sort of less bluffs. Now, he could have a combo draw or something like that, like jack, ten of spades. But I just think it's going to be less common that he's going to be raising, you know, with air or something like that, like King Jack or, you know what I mean, with the small blind calling, because the small blind could always, you know, sort of have a queen. You know, the way that I would probably approach this, and again, I have learned this, this is what I keep talking about, like on a lot of my stuff, on my podcast and on my videos that, you know, the computer stuff is very, very helpful when looking at a situation like this that you haven't ever thought of. And I'm not talking about trying to play optimally, but it's stuff that you sort of learn. And what I've learned is, is that it sort of prefers to put a lot of money in with the best kicker. Meaning that if you had like queen 10 or queen jack, maybe to a lesser extent, king, queen, you know, because you're not going to really have anything less than that from your opening position, those tend to be the queens that you would call the check raise with queen 10, queen jack. Here, I would very seriously just consider putting in basically the three bet, especially when you've got a small blind call and the big blind raises because he's going to either have a combo draw that he probably has to continue with like King Jack of spades or Jack 10 of spades, or he has a queen that he's never going to fold. I know maybe the gut reaction here would be to just call, but I think specifically with like ace queen and maybe even nine, nine here, that's when you really want to start thinking about putting in the three bet here quite a bit. Uh, I did. I really wanted to. And just because I was in position, I did decide to just call. Okay. So hero calls. And, and I think that that's not uncommon that people are going to do that. And the small blind folds or what? Yeah, the small blind folds. He was kind of irrelevant. He was more worried about the wine list than, <laughs> okay. than playing. He'd call any small bet, anything that was like $20, $15. He always saw the turn. They have a, this they person. have a, they have a, they, so they serve booze at Boston Billiards, but not at Chasers? Uh, Chasers serves booze also. Oh, oh, my yeah. God. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they both do. <laughs> they have a wine list. So uh, Ch <laughs> Chasers, of course, is a former Chinese restaurant. And Josh was actually telling me, too, that Kowloon's on Route 1 in Saugus is going to close, which is a shame. I always try to explain to people that Northeast Chinese food, American Chinese food, is different than anywhere else in the whole country. When I lived in California for like 15 years poo poo platters, scorpion yeah. bowls, chicken fingers, stuff like that. But it's a shame that that yeah. place is closing down. But anyways, okay, see, so big blind raise to 80, you call, other guy folds. So you've basically put in another one. So I think the pot's like 225, right? Yep. Okay. All right, let's go to the turn. And the turn is the tennis bait. That's not really a great card for you. I mean, it's interesting. It's interesting that the front door spade draw comes in, but when you start to, you know, 
when you start to look at the combo draws that raise on the flop, though, most of them contain the 10 of spades. So, you know, he can't have jack 10 of spades, right? I mean, obviously, he could have king jack of spades, which would now be a straight flush. That's one combo. Or if he raised with some, you know, nut flush draws. But there are, a, 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 you know, a good portion of sort of, uh, sp I mean, it, it's... It's probably not the worst spade for you, I guess is my point. I think a deuce is just because it cuts out on the, the ability for this guy to actually have, you know, one of those combo draws. So what happens now? He leads out or bets out for 125. Okay, so big blind bets 125. Now, before this bet, you guys have uh, like, well, you got like 550 left, right? So if you make this call, you're going to have like 375 left, right? Yeah, it's Something gonna like be that. a little under a pot. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would call here. You know, I don't, I don't think there's really much to do at the, as play. Yeah, honestly, with that bet, I thought he wanted me to fold. Was exactly what I said. I thought Jack Ten right then and there is, but well, I don't know. Mean, because it's a large bet, you mean? Because I mean, he's only betting one twenty-five. It's not crazy. Um, no, it's definitely not big, but it's a decent sized bet for the game. Yeah. Okay. You know, he's sitting with five hundred. It is a quarter of a buy-in. Right. No, of course. And, and when we talk about a low stakes, you know, usually you're actually looking at the absolute size of the bet as opposed to the percentage of pot. That's actually a more telling um, way to figure out somebody's hand. Like I always talk about like, you know, if for some reason you're at a one three game and the pot's twelve hundred bucks and somebody bets six hundred. Yeah, that's 50 percent of the pot. But that's just a gigantic bet. Right. Like if you faced a six hundred dollar exactly. bet, it's just a lot of strength. So hero calls. So now it looks like the pot's 475, and you have, uh, like I said, you've got, what is it, maybe like 420, what is it, you put in 80, 100, 225, so like 425 left. So just under a pot size bet, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, let's go to the river. And the river is the eight. An offsuit eight? Yeah, it was an offsuit eight. Okay. So. That puts a one-liner out here to a straight, right? To a jack. Yes. Queen. So again, it's you open with ace, queen of clubs. From out of the gun, six-handed, small blind, big blind call. Queen, nine, queen with two spades. Check, check. You bet 20. Small blind calls. Big blind raise to 80. You call. Small blind folds. Pots 225. Turns the 10 of spades. Big blind bets 125. You call. Pots 475. Now the river's an eight. So queen, nine, queen, 10, eight. Um, that's not going to be a great river card for you either. Not only does it put a one liner out there, but now you lose to queen. I mean, you lost to queen 10 on the turn, right? But you also lose now to queen Jack, right? Um, which kind of sucks yep. too, if he actually ran into a straight. So. Yeah. He thinks for three seconds or so, not long. And he moves all in. So. Big blind all in for like 425. Yeah, we had about, I didn't ask for a count, but our stacks were almost identical. I mean, here's the Less than $50. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, man. I mean, I haven't played one three. I mean, actually, I play one three in, <laughs> in Austin, but it's not like a one three like this. It plays more like a 10 20. Um, you know, when you try to start to look at the theory of this, it's like you start now your hand, like you probably will have better hands to call with across rivers here than just ace queen uh flushes right full houses maybe even some straights something like that like if you had called with jack 10 if you had bet called in the flop with jack 10 and continued on the turn but you know i don't know if you would continue with the spade across but i just when i see somebody really start to put a bunch of money in here at one three i'm just going to overfold here at the end i just don't really know um what you're really going to beat here you know what i mean i just it's just going to be really, really hard. And, and again, I, I, would, I would go back to that whole thing of the action of him raising when the small blind called. I know that you said the small blind wasn't that interested, but it, it, it just should have less of a frequency of just an air ball bluff. And when he follows through on the turn and you call, and now it's kind of odd on the river. It almost feels like he's really like sort of nutted up here, like queen 10 or something like that, or... You know, maybe he flopped like nine nine because I don't think the straight is necessarily all that relevant. I don't know. It's interesting. Would a guy go take this line with queen jack, no spade? I mean, that's yeah. starting to get pretty thin. You know, I'll give him that. He he is he's definitely a confident player. 
He, he's yeah. not. There's some people I still would call. No doubt about it, you know? What, you mean just, just putting I, them on total air or what? Some people I said I would call. No, him, him I folded the two. I, I don't think he would put the rest of this back in on total air. No, I'm saying like that the, for the some people that you would call, you would call putting them on total air? Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they're, they're complete maniacs. They just, <laughs> just do that. It's, it's one three. There's a, the guy that shows up on Friday and he just starts blasting off. Yeah. A couple come to mind right now, you know? So what like, did you I put too much in the pots mine and they're just going to keep going. So what did you do? Did you fold? I did fold. And then did and you find out what he had? He didn't show, but his buddy came over, you know, a little bit later, five, 10 minutes later and just said, Oh, you're doing pretty good. You know, he had won a couple other hands after that one. And he turned and he said, Oh, it's easy when you flop in full houses. And oh. Like I said, he, he could have <laughs> also known I was obviously sitting right next to him, you know? Right. So, was he lying? Maybe, maybe not. But I would just say, uh, to, I mean, I would take away from this hand, I, you know, it kind of sucks, the, obviously, the run out, right? But I do think that you probably should have some three bets here for value, maybe even skew towards value, and I might take ace-queen and just and just do it. Um, because I, I just think that there's more value in building a pot up with a nut hand on the flop than to call as a trap for the purpose of letting some bluff fire off into you. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I would just rather start getting money in before the, you know, before the sort of board gets scarier and people don't want to put money in. Let me ask you this question. If the if he checked the turn, what would you have done on the ten of spades? I I might have checked back. That's a good one. I, I know if it was a low brick on the river, I would have definitely have bet if he checked. You mean on the turn? The turn? Not sure. I'm, I might have checked back. I might ooh, have to say so, right now. So, so I could also put him on Jack Ten, and I might have bet to see if he can fold. But so you're saying that if you're saying that if the river was a low brick and he checked, you would have bet for value. I w definitely. Yeah, because you just don't think he's like going for a check raise or checking a flush there in that spot. No, definitely wouldn't try and lose out. He would. I don't think he'd try and lose out on that value. Yeah, yeah. The, the the turn's an interesting one. The turn's definitely interesting. I, I think that you can put in one of those excuse me seventy five dollar bets in the turn for a little bit of protection and value. Um, when the front door there comes in, it's 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 it's. It, I mean, I think he the way that it went down, he ended up making it easier for you. But you know, when you call with trips, really good trips on the flop, and then it comes in the front door on the turn and brings in some straights. That's what I'm. I guess my point though is, like I said, like I, I'd rather start building just so that you can cooler somebody so that you don't have an action sort of card that kind of shuts down. Because, you know, if you three bet flop and he calls and the turns a spade and he checks you, then you're probably are forced to check back. Um, but at least the pot's getting, you know, rather large. That's the whole point of this, but I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I'll talk to you soon. All right. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.